we're going to see what God has for us. And I'm dealing with a subject today that uh, has been on my heart for, I guess, about eight or nine months now. And I think you'll understand why as we not only get into the text, but we get into the application of the text this day. Uh, I've titled the message, Hell's Gates Are Coming Down. That may sound like an intriguing title. It comes right out of the passage of Scripture that we'll be looking at as we explain that in a moment. But I titled it that because the way believers respond to conspiracy theories, and 2020 brought more conspiracy theories to the forefront than any year that I can recall in my lifetime. Perhaps that's because of social media, uh, maybe because it was an election year. Certainly, it had a lot to do with COVID-19 and all that we encountered, all that we faced there. But I want us to be reminded as a church family, I want us to be reminded as a Bible-believing community that the gates of hell are coming down and quite honestly, there's nothing the enemy can do about that. It is based on the authority of God's Word, the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. So find Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 20 in your Bible, and let's read along this morning. It says, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say you are John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But you, he asked them, who do you say that I am? That's going to be so important for you to decide how you're going to answer that question when it comes to how you respond to conspiracy theories and all of the fear-mongering that's in the world today. Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, you are the Christ, the Son of of the living God. Jesus responded, Simon, son of Jonah, you are blessed because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the forces of Hades, or the gates of hell, will not overpower it. The gates of hell are coming down. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, Whatever you bind on earth is already bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth is already loosed in heaven. And he gave the disciples orders to tell no one that he was the Messiah. All that was coming in due time. What does that have to do with conspiracy theories and perhaps some apprehension as we face uh, an election day here in Georgia, as we face... Um, all the consequences of an election in the previous year and the concerns about that and all the conspiracy theories that went along with that, with the election, with COVID, and you name it. What does this scripture have to do with how we respond as a church to conspiracy theories? How does it shape our confidence and lead us? Well, conspiracy theories certainly are not new. They've been around since the beginning of time because since the fall, we were introduced all the way back in Genesis 3 to a grand conspirator, right, who is always up to something. There are extremes on how we can respond to all that's going on in the world. We can embrace every conspiracy theory foolishly and sometimes make fools of ourselves, or we can ignore that there is that grand conspirator out there and fail to learn what we need to from Scripture about how we can have confidence in spite of that. You know, one of the first conspiracy theories I remember was concerning Elvis. Uh, back, I remember as a child watching the news with my dad, and the bulletin came out that uh, Elvis Presley had died. Man, our hearts were broken. Everybody loved Elvis, right? And, and so our hearts were broken. Now, that can't be true. And it, it was so hard for some people to grasp, but that it wasn't uh, much longer, especially throughout the 80s. I remember all the conspiracy theories, and there would be tabloid article after tabloid. Remember when you didn't go and find this stuff on social media, but you actually were in a grocery store line looking at a tabloid, and all the places where Elvis had been seen, and people had taken pictures. You know, there were more pictures of Elvis in uh, tabloid magazines than there were pictures of Bigfoot now all of a sudden. So this was this grand conspiracy. Some say that he didn't really die, that he lived, that uh, he had been cited in all these places that he was under FBI witness protection because he was a witness for the, uh, against the mafia or something. 
The next conspiracy I remember, really remember kind of getting into uh, had to do with the JFK assassination. Now, I wasn't born when he was assassinated, but 1991, Oliver Stone came out with his movie, JFK. Did uh, Lee Harvey Oswald act alone? Was Jack Ruby covering up something by taking him out? Was it the mob? Was it the government? Who was it that uh, really uh, assassinated? You remember the scenes from the movie, the, the back and to the left, the back and to the, it, 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 something was fishy, something was wrong. So there was a conspiracy, many conspiracy theories uh, concerning the death of JFK. Uh, the other one I heard talked about a lot in my childhood and throughout my teen and college years was the moonwalk. Was it real or was it faked? A lot of people said they, they didn't go to the moon. They were out in the desert somewhere. They were kind of faking all that. It was during the uh, Cold War, so they were trying to convince Russia and the rest of the world that, hey, you don't want to mess with us. We've already put a man on the moon. And even recently, you know, some of my uh, flat earther friends have kind of argued that all of that was fake. And, you know, I, re I remembered meeting the church I served uh, previously before coming here, uh, meeting astronaut Charlie Duke, who walked on the moon. He was an unbeliever at the time. Later, he became a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and shared his testimony in many places. And, and it sure seemed real to me, but I've had other friends say, no, 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 no. Uh, Charlie Duke was just lying through his teeth if he told you he walked on the moon. Nobody's ever walked on the moon. Um, what about the uh, Georgia Guidestones Monument. Some of you may have seen the promotion material that I put out for this message. Uh, I did not know they existed. Some people are a little surprised that I've lived in this area and didn't know that those Guidestones were there. They were erected in 1980, commissioned uh, by a, a man who went by the pseudonym R.C. Christian. Personally, I kind of think it was a couple of guys from up north uh, putting their two different names together that made this happen on behalf of Concern. Americans. But boy, it's full of post-apocalyptic moral codes. And some say, man, this is uh, a, a very demonic, a very cultic thing. And, you know, perhaps it is even by default, if not intentionally so. But many believe that it's related to uh, witchcraft and the occult, Satanism, or they trace it to the cabal. And uh, because some of the principles certainly look like those who would try to control people, control humanity, control population, and that sort of thing. Uh, it's, it's kind of there, right? Um, certainly could have been motivated by the Cold War, the fear of nuclear holocaust, and how we you know, should kind of run the world after that happens, after we've wiped out the world's population. And so you can kind of check that out for yourself. Um, all of you, uh, under the sound of my voice, probably have heard conspiracy theories concerning the 9-11 bombings of the World Trade Towers, and of course we know that a plane also crashed into the Pentagon, or at least uh, most of us believe that. Some believe that, hey, they didn't find a plane, it was totally disintegrated, it was really a missile or a bomb or something. Uh, but many believe that the, even the United States government placed explosives within the World Trade Towers because there was no way that they would, um, those who embraced the conspiracy theory say there's no way those planes could have brought down something uh, built as uh, powerfully strong as the World Trade Towers, and so that it would only justify war uh, to give the United States an opportunity to exert power in the Middle East and that sort of thing. And so when it comes to the 9-11 uh, attack on our nation, the conspiracy theories abound. They're endless on YouTube and on the internet, and again, you've probably seen many of them. And then let's come back to this previous year, 2020 that we lived in, COVID-19. Conspiracy theories again abound. And this one was a hard one for me because there was so much of a mixture between that which we know to be true and that which we don't know whether it's true or not. And then there was discussion of this uh, pandemic based on a virus that some say was created or manufactured by men in a lab in China. Some say that it was actually manufactured by Trump and the U.S. military as some kind of cover-up that uh, this, this whole idea of a pandemic was kind of brought on so that there could be these arrests of those members of the cabal, this Illuminati or so to speak, these, these powerful few that, that, that people were arresting those members and that all of this, I remember one of the things that was prophesied during this time was that in September of 2020, 
that all this was going to come out and prominent people like Bill Clinton and others were going to be arrested in September and obviously that did not happen. Others believe that COVID-19 was created in the lab by China as an act of uh, terrorism or biological warfare that it was going to be used for that person. And then there were those who believed that uh, people like Bill Gates and other members, uh, if there is some kind of a cabal, some kind of a top 1% of 1% of the people who are really ruling the world were using this for uh, steps toward population control. Or maybe they had a financial vested interest in vaccinations. And so those vaccinations, some conspiracies go as far as uh, those vaccinations are kind of slipping the mark of the beast or at least creating the environment for the mark of the beast. For something to kind of slip through without you knowing it. And of course, I kind of dealt with that at the time. There's um, not going to be uh, this secret application of the mark of the beast in your life personally as a Christian. From everything I understand in scriptures, you'll have a clear choice on whether you're going to embrace Jesus Christ or reject Jesus Christ. And those who embrace him will not be fooled. Now, what about the cabal that, you know, when we use that, what are we talking about? Uh, we'll come back to this at the end. I'll use this whiteboard to demonstrate some things, especially why you don't have to live your life in fear of such a group. But sometimes they're referred to as the top 1%. Actually, it would be much, much less. It certainly wouldn't be one in every 100 people. We're talking about the world's wealthiest, most influential, most powerful people, the biggest influencers. Some say that they are all involved in this secret cult or more specifically, the occult, Satanism itself, that they're involved in pedophilia, child sacrifice, Satan worship. And so when certain proven stories come out, like uh, what happened with Epstein and the mysterious uh, death of Epstein, or the fact that anyone who ever found any info on the Clintons or certain other leaders, you know, certain truths like, look how many people died that were connected. Then all of a sudden we start trying to put all the pieces together and say something's happening behind the scenes that we need to figure out. And it will drive us crazy if we don't feel like we have all the answers and we begin to live in fear. Now, I haven't scratched the surface of discussing any of these conspiracy theories. 80% of Americans, when surveyed back in the late uh, 20th century, 80% of Americans were familiar with some of the JFK conspiracy theories. A recent survey showed that there's really only about 7% of Americans that are familiar with the conspiracy theories surrounding the cabal, the top 1%. Some of you, that means, are hearing me bring up something that you didn't even know anything about. And so that's kind of surprising to me in the day of social media. It's because there are so many things that grasp our attention, so many conspiracy theories that distract us and pull us in so many different directions that we don't always focus on that one thing. But uh, again, surveys tell us about 70% or 7% are really engaged in this study of the, the cabal. And uh, again, that kind of blows me away in this internet age. Is there this secret cult, the secret occult, the top 1% of 1% of 1%, the wealthiest and the most powerful and well-established. And so, there, again, there's kind of two extremes when it comes to this. Some that say, hey, I've got it all figured out. Here's who they are and what they're up to. And others who ignore the fact that, yeah, there is such a group of people that have influence, and we need to be careful about how we listen to these folks. Well, what do we do as believers do we need to all of a sudden, you know, when I was a kid and I read the Hardy Boys books or uh, the Nancy Drew mysteries, do we need to all of a sudden say, all right, I'm going to depart from my study of the Scriptures and I'm going to become uh, some kind of an investigator of conspiracy theories? Because I'm telling you, with the Internet, with social media, you will spend the rest of your life on one or two or three conspiracy theories because they're in such abundance today. You know, we've called the internet the, um, the, the super highway of information. 
And uh, we've got to be real careful about that. And you'll see that within the text, within the scriptures this morning. So what do we do? How do we respond? Based on the text that I just gave you that said the gates of hell are coming down, they will not prevail against the church, what are some things we need to see in the Word of God? Let's, let's take our mind and our heart away from all these conspiracies for a moment. What do we need to see in the Word of God that will help us to better respond? Well, number one, we need to identify Jesus as the Christ and believe in him. The greatest conspiracy of all conspiracies is the one to keep you from believing Jesus is the Christ, the Son of Of the living God. That's what Christmas was all about, right? That God was revealing Himself through His Son, Jesus Christ. Yes, up until that point, we had God's revelation of Himself to us in His Word and throughout history and the different ways He had made Himself known to His covenant people, Israel. They had the law and the prophets. That was God speaking, revealing Himself, His character, His nature, and His will, His plans, and His purposes to them. But Jesus comes along and He says, In John 5, 39, you search the Scriptures because in them you think you have eternal life. And they were right. They did have eternal life in the Scriptures. He says, but they are they which testify of me. They had overlooked passages that we've studied recently, like Genesis 3, 15, that says that the Messiah, the seed of a woman, would crush the head of the serpent. Boy, that would give us hope if we could remember that every day. They didn't see within the Passover as Jesus would bring great illumination and interpretation of that event when he would say, this is my blood, which is shed for you. With that third cup of the Passover, the cup of redemption, saying that Passover lamb was a picture of what Messiah was coming to do. They missed many times verses like Isaiah 53 that said he would be wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we would be healed. That the first coming of Messiah would not be to save civilization from wreckage, but to save people from the wreckage of civilization that would be the people who would return with him one day in all of his glory to set up his kingdom. Now look at verses 13 and 14 within the text. Jesus comes into this region of Caesarea Philippi and he asks his disciples, who do people say that I, the Son of Man, who do people say that I am? And they said, some say John the Baptist. Hey, maybe you're John the Baptist reincarnated, or maybe he wasn't dead. Some say that you're Elijah, you know. Now, John the Baptist would come in the spirit of Elijah, the last of one of those old covenant prophets who would, who would show the fulfillment of the new covenant was about to take place, but Jesus was not Here in the spirit of Elijah, he was here as the son of the living God. Still others, Jeremiah, are one of the prophets, but he said, who do you say that I am? People need to come to a place where they identify Jesus as the Christ, the son of the living God. Remember John 1, 12, as many as received him to them, he gave the power, the authority, become the sons or the children of God, even to those who believe on his name. And so when we look at verses 15 through 17, we see this revealed to Peter. Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus responded, Simon, son of Jonah, you are blessed because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. In other words, you didn't figure this out on your own. And so when we get into these traps to where we're saying, I have to in my own power, with my own investigative abilities, I've got to figure this out. No, 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 no. My Father in heaven revealed this to you. Revelation, God making himself known to us. The doctrine of revelation, the way God discloses. See, the the atheist says there is no God. The agnostic comes along and says, well, if there is a God, he would be so infinite, so transcendent, there would be no way we could get our mind around him, no way we could know him. The Christian comes and says, yes, there is a God, and we can know him because he is. If he has all power, he can do all things, and he can reveal himself to us. He can make himself known. That's what we have in the written word, and that's what we have in the living word. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, revealed to us so that we might live in relationship with our Creator. And so we have revelation of Jesus Christ and 
the Word of God, God revealed to us for relational purposes. And on top of that, we also have illumination. That's where the Holy Spirit, who comes to indwell all believers, gives us understanding of the Scriptures, the ability to interpret and apply Scriptures to our lives. That's called illumination. So we walk closely with God and we stay in his word, it is illuminated. We don't have to be part of an Illuminati. We're not trying to get in on some secret they have. In fact, they're missing a mystery that God has revealed to us. And then as we walk with God, we also have discernment, spiritual discernment, because we've studied the Scriptures. We know the truth. And we have something within us, it's the Holy Spirit and the Word of God helping us to discern, hey, that's not right, or, or, or that's not right. Or, that's, that conspiracy doesn't hold water, or maybe that conspiracy does hold water and is antithetical to the things of God. That is discernment. When we neglect the Word and prayer and the mission God gave us to take this Word, this Gospel, this message, this Christ to the nations, when we neglect that, to spend countless hours investigating conspiracies with fear and trembling. Now, folks, I'm preaching to myself as much as I'm preaching to you today because these conspiracies get posted in my uh, social media feeds. They get emailed to me. They get sent to me in Messenger. These conspiracies abound. We see it even on the news. When we spend countless hours investigating conspiracies with fear and trembling, saying, oh, Lord, I've got to figure this out. What we're saying is, God, I need all knowledge. I need omniscience. God, there's, there's something I need to know that you're not telling me in your word, and so you didn't tell me enough. I've got to figure this out. And we're guilty of the same sin of Adam and Eve in the garden that Satan used. Hey, God's just not telling you everything. God's not giving you everything you need to know. And we're not trusting God with his word, what he has told us. Remember, he had told Adam everything he needed to know in the garden. What he needed to avoid and all that he had the freedom to embrace. But when the enemy comes along and he says, God's not telling you something And we neglect the word and spend countless hours trying to figure out what God's not telling us. We're missing out on what God is telling us, and we lose sight of the revelation he's given us and the discernment that he wants us to have. Now, I'm not talking about neglecting any observation of these conspiracies. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And so, yeah, we want to be aware of how he's at work in this world. And so I'm not talking about avoiding sober vigilance. What I'm talking about is having an obsession with the conspiracies rather than a passion for truth and the Word of God. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3-5 through 5 says, His divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which we have been given exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. In other words, when you get into Jesus, into his word, filled with his Holy Spirit, embracing all that he has for you, then he's taking care of you, and you have everything you need. You don't need some secret knowledge of some Illuminati or some secret society that everybody else is not in on. And we're going to come back to that in just a moment. What will the mark of the beast be all about one day, the 666? Is it something that you're going to go and you're going to walk in, somebody's going to give you a shot and it's going to pop out on your forehead, 666? It's the number of a man. It's three, meaning complete, three numbers. Six, incomplete. Seven is the number of perfection. Complete in perfection. Scripture is the best commentary on Scripture. John tells us in Revelation that it's the number of a man, meaning it ain't Jesus. Just plain and simple. You don't want to be fooled. You don't want to be led down 
streets that take you straight to hell, far from God, or anything like that. You don't want to be duped, right? None of us do. Don't spend your time trying to figure out all the counterfeits. Know what the real thing looks like. Know who Jesus is. Walk with him. Spend more time in his word discovering God's call, God's mission on your life, getting into the revelation of God's word. Then you will have discernment when somebody is trying to lead you astray. Now, here's something that's important because a lot of people will get into what I'm talking about here, and you'll debate, and you'll grapple, and we'll go back and forth about it, and you'll skip the second point this morning. Secondly, if we're going to overcome the gates of hell these days, we need to identify with the church that is built on Christ and his word. We need to identify with the church that is built on Christ and his word. The mysteries of the kingdom aren't given to governments. The mysteries of the kingdom of God aren't given to secret societies. The mysteries of the kingdom are not given to those who would meditate and become one with nature or take crystals in their hand and uh, just kind of go, oh, <laughs> The mysteries of the kingdom are given to his church. Ephesians 1, 9 and 10 says, Having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to the good pleasure which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, man, what kind of times are we living in today? He might gather together in one place all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. And through knowing him and becoming a part of his covenant community, the book of Ephesians has written to the church, having made known to us, the church, the mystery of his will. And So don't feel sorry like we're being left out because we're not in some top 1% of 1% of 1%. Feel sorry for those who are, who have rejected the truth of God's word. As Romans 1 says, thinking themselves to be wise, they became fools. Smartest people in the world, fools because they didn't see it in the Word of God. Look at verse 18 in Matthew 16 here. He says, and I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock you are Petros, and on this Petra, it's a masculine and feminine, but it's also often used for uh, small rock, big rock, I will build my church and the forces of Hades will not overpower it. Christ is building his church. And people argue about whether or not the foundation is Peter or the statement, his confession, his profession of faith, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Yet there's something foundational about the apostolic work. The apostles were that, uh, the, those first living stones that were being laid, but it was being laid on the chief cornerstone who is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it's combination here. Yes, Jesus is the foundation, and we must come to that place where we identify him as the Christ. But then we want to identify with the church and become a part of the church of the living Christ. And so there are people who will study these scriptures and study past, present, future, and study the book of Revelation, but they don't get plugged into a local church that is on mission for Christ, being built up on the solid foundation. Matthew chapter 10, verse 18. Some of us sometimes say, well, you know, what if the evil conspiracy exists? We're told here in uh, in chapter 16 and verse 18 that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. But, But, Pastor Robbie, what if in all these conspiracy theories, somebody, what if they're conspiring to hurt us? What if they're conspiring to do things that will take our lives? What if they conspire to kill Christians. What what will happen? Are you saying they're powerless to do that, Pastor Robbie? What if they conspire to kill us one day? Matthew 10, 18 says, don't fear the one who can destroy the body, but fear the one who can destroy both body and soul in hellfire. Don't be afraid of what they can do to the body. Paul understood that to live is Christ and to die is gain, and if they give me a fast exit to glory, then I'm okay with that. Don't fear the ones who can destroy the body, even if they are conspiring to kill us one day. Even if this world, and by the way, when we read the book of Revelation and the Great Tribulation, all kinds of crazy things are going to happen. 
But don't be afraid of that. The goal, here's the problem. We've made our goal safety. And we pray for protection and God keep us safe and we do everything we can to protect ourselves and keep ourselves safe. Go back and look at the book of Acts and find out how many times they prayed for their safety. They didn't. They prayed for boldness regardless of whatever was done to them. So that Stephen, that spirit-filled deacon who became the first martyr, stood there with boldness and preached the gospel to the people who would stone him to death and he would walk into the presence of his Lord. God is sovereign over all of that. Nothing can happen to you without his permission, but for some reason in those early years and even in places around the world today, the blood of the martyr is the seed of the church, and we need to pray for a holy boldness. But when we begin to think, okay, it's God's will for us to be safe, I'm reminded in the Chronicles of Narnia where Lucy asked if Aslan, the lion, is he safe? And, you know, Mr. Beaver is like, no. Of course he's not safe, but he is good, and you can trust him. The goal is not safety. The goal is faithfulness, faithfulness, faithful to the one who can destroy body and soul in hell, who is sovereign over the devil himself and sovereign over hell. Hell is not a place that the devil is ruling with a pitchfork and forcing people to do things they don't want to do. Hell is a place that Satan will be kicked into and will suffer more than anybody. And the Lamb of God, according to Revelation 14, is the one who's overseeing all of that. So God is sovereign over the devil and hell itself. Gates don't move. And so when we come back to verse 18 here, and it says the gates of hell will not prevail, it's because we, as believers who embrace the Word and take the gospel to the nation, We are pushing back the forces of darkness. The gates of hell will come down. When we're proclaiming truth, not trying to master their lies or be mastered by their lies, but proclaiming the truth of God's word. Identify with a church that is built on Christ, and you will be victorious. And then finally, identify the principles Identify the principles of the kingdom of God and bless your world with those principles. They'll be a blessing to you, but they will bless your world. You will discover what God created for. You didn't get saved just to sit and to sour and to soak somewhere. God saved you and and empowered you with his Holy Spirit and left you in this world for now, has not raptured you out of here yet because he has a purpose and a plan for your life for you to be a blessing to the people around you. Jesus came to do what? Luke says to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me, Jesus said, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That Christ, the King, has now come and he's willing to be the King of your heart and the King of your life. John 20 and 21 says, as the Father has sent me, Jesus speaking here, so send I you. So all those things Jesus was about, he's saying now I'm empowering you to be about those things in the Great Commission. Matthew's version, Matthew chapter 28 says, all authority has been given unto me in heaven and on earth, and therefore you can go and make disciples. You can go in my name, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You are empowered and you have everything that you need to do the work that God has called you to do. And people everywhere, they want to figure out the times and the seasons, which Jesus said are not for us to know. But so few want to take time to disciple the next generation. They'll spend all their time reading the contemporary tabloids on the Internet and very little time making disciples. People will sit and they will let their children and their grandchildren stray far from God. Reminds me, I'm about to start a series. They're not getting it. (laughs) They're not getting it. The series is going to be called, Are They Really Getting It? But they're not getting it. And we spend all our time trying to figure out the contemporary tabloids on the Internet and everything else and, and try to master the lies of the enemy rather than the truth of God's Word and disciple another generation in that truth, trusting God to tell us everything we need to know. Remember, If God is for us, who can conspire against us? So what did Jesus say? Verse 19, 
Verse 19, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Listen, you're going to have something that everybody else won't have. Whatever you bind on earth is already bound or will have already been bound, literally, in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will have already uh, have been loosed in heaven. So uh, what he is saying here is that you're going to have some principles of the kingdom. Remember how we were taught to pray? Matthew recorded this in chapter 6. Jesus said, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, that's, I believe, in a prayer for the, uh, the ultimate kingdom of God, the, at least the millennial kingdom as it comes in its fullness and Jesus rules and reigns on the earth. But it's also a reminder for believers to live out kingdom principles so that our lives and the life of the church and Christian families within the community become previews of coming attractions, right? Um, previews of coming attractions, showing the world what it means to live under the Lordship of Jesus Christ with a full knowledge that Jesus is who he claimed to be and tells us everything that we need to know. Now, understanding all that, that we need to grasp this key, this gospel authority, that we now hold the keys, we have the principles and precepts from God that we can live out in the power of his Holy Spirit, that we can proclaim to other brothers and sisters, and first the gospel, hopefully building the family of God, And when we take those principles, we then have what I'm going to call some truths that textualize, the contextualize conspiracies for believers. I believe one of the biggest problems we have today is we don't understand the text we just read, nor the general message of Scripture that provides us with truths that contextualize conspiracies in the life of believers. And so let me share with you some of these truths to kind of give you practical application. First of all, God is God, right? (laughs) You're like, uh, yeah, I, I knew that. Well, we don't act like we know that sometimes. God is God, meaning he is omnipotent, he has all power, he is omniscient, he has all knowledge, no secret is being kept from God. No conspiracy is being kept from God, and he is sovereign. He is in control of it all. Nothing happens without his permission. Yes, he gives us a free will, but he has the parameters in place for that, and nothing can happen without God's permission. Job understood that even in his suffering as God reminded him, listen, who tells the ocean you can come this far and no further? God is sovereign. Remember that. He's omnipotent. He has all power. He's omniscient. He has all knowledge. And he is sovereign. Nothing happens without his permission. Secondly, God is creator and Lord of this universe. It was created for his purposes, for his glory, and he is Lord over it all. Now, not everyone recognizes the lordship of Christ, but he is Lord whether you recognize it or not. Number three, there is a devil who is real, who rebelled. Remember, he was kicked out of heaven. And he is the father of fallen humanity. So we, I'll come back to that in a moment as well. But we need to keep in mind that the devil himself is the father of lies and the father of fallen humanity. So even if you're like me and you think that 90% of the conspiracies out there are at least are hogwash. Yeah, people are conspiring and some of them are true. There is a devil who is a conspirator. So people do conspire under his influence. But that devil was crushed by Jesus, as we saw in our previous messages. And now, according to the book of Romans, he is underneath our feet. And so as believers in the Christ. Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God, as we have identified not only him as the Christ, but we've identified with his church, he is now being crushed underneath our feet. Fourthly, the gospel of the Messiah, the gospel of Jesus Christ, is God's plan for redeeming humanity. He has always been revealing himself. We saw this just last week that uh, in these last days he revealed himself through his Son, Jesus Christ. Worldly kingdoms will collapse. Worldly kingdoms will 
collapse. And I'll say this again. Yes, God has this covenant relationship with Israel that we read about, but we don't see anywhere in Scripture, even in the New Testament, that the United States is a new covenant uh, people of God. It's the church. It's the church that's the body of Christ. The church is the bride of Christ. It's the church that the new covenant is established with through the blood of Jesus, and that is the body and the bride of Christ all around the world, wherever they may be. And so he owes our nation. He has been so good to us. He has blessed us richly, but he is not obligated to us. He's obligated to those who believe on his name. Fifth, God is in charge of the consummation of the ages. So all of these conspiracies about where it's taking the world, it does not happen without God's permission. God is in charge of consummation of the ages, how this world as we know it is going to come to an end. And the ushering in of the eternal kingdom, nothing is taking God by surprise. He's always had the whole world in his hands, and the way the world as we know it comes to an end, he has already mapped it out, and no conspiracy will change it. In fact, I'll show you in a moment, they are just puppets in his hands. It will happen according to his plan and happen according to his time. And so, again, don't try to figure out every, you can chase rabbits forever down all these conspiracy roads. Get in the word of God so that you're walking with him. It will happen according to his plan and in his time. Next, you need to know that human institutions, governments, societies, false religions, and powerful individuals will conspire. Now listen, it could be intentionally or it could be by default. Remember, if they reject the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, if they reject to believe the word of God, then by default they will align themselves with the father of lies. And so human institutions, government societies, false religions, and powerful individuals are all going to somehow be involved either intentionally in conspiracies or by default. They didn't mean to. I think that happens more often than we realize it. But they will unsuccessfully, they will try unsuccessfully, conspire unsuccessfully to thwart God's plans and or impose their own plans for humanity and the world. What do I mean by default? I I mean that, yes, there are some that are getting together to conspire evil. It happens. But I think most often what happens is that there are people who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, some of them in worldly terms, are well-intentioned, trying to be benevolent people, not realizing what they're doing. And again, I'm going to give you a visual for that, so hang with me here. But you've identified with Christ and his church, and we have to be careful as believers that we spend our time making it known that we've identified with Jesus, that we've identified with his church, and quit trying to figure out which of these other institutions that we have to be identified with. And finally, true believers can rely on the sufficiency of Scripture and the indwelling Spirit to rise above conspiracy traps. So whether the conspiracy is real or true, and you're like, there's knowledge I don't have, and God, I'm not omnipotent, you're holding something back from me, I've got to have this knowledge, I've got to figure out this conspiracy. And God says, I've given you all you need. You have enough in this word. Get into it and know it, and you'll recognize anything that's a problem. So so even if the conspiracy is true, you don't have to fall into the trap of mastering the conspiracy. And it will also protect you when you live with that confidence and you've trusted God to reveal what you need to know, to fill you with the Holy Spirit, to help you to interpret and to see the Word of God illuminated to apply to your everyday life, come what may in 2021, when you live that out as a true believer, you'll rise above the trap not only to avoid those conspiracies that may be true, but also to not worry about the ones that aren't. To just realize, hey, 
whether that's true or not, I'm a child of the living God. Nothing can happen to me without his permission. So how can we visualize all of this? Back in April and May when my inbox was being flooded with conspiracy theories, many, many just really took my attention. And there were enough elements of truth in all of them uh, that made it hard to discern what might be a lie at times. And, and I became so frustrated by this. And I began looking at the Word of God saying, but Lord, what have you told me? And I'll tell you, God put my mind at such peace. I, I, I had such remarkable peace. And uh, I'm not saying he gave me divine revelation because be careful of anybody. In, in, in fact, uh, don't listen to anybody who says, God's given me a revelation he hasn't given anybody else. That's how cults and conspiracies and all of that get started. Don't listen to those folks. What God is doing today is giving illumination. He, he's helping you to, as you study the Word of God, see how it applies. And so I know we like to sing, you know, I, I need a revelation. No, we have a revelation. We need an illumination to understand how to take the principles and precepts that we already have before us and apply it in the times in which we live. And so when I begin to say, Lord, help me to understand and apply the Scriptures you've given us, this was not a revelation from God. It's just what His Word already says. And so I drew this on a piece of notebook paper. I still have it. I was going to say it may be somewhere in my Bible today. I don't see it, but uh, I drew this up on a piece of notebook paper. And again, this, uh, this application of biblical truth and these principles I just gave you uh, just, just kind of came to the forefront. And so what, what I drew was a triangle because a lot of people would talk about all the folks in the world, and forgive my uh, art ability or lack thereof, but uh, I, I drew this triangle that represented all the people that live in the world today. And someone who, uh, the conspiracy theorists and all that, they would draw the same triangle. And they, they would say, listen, the, everything, you know, pretty much that we are around you know, represents the general population. And so here are all the people of the world. And you might say that, you know, uh, the ones that are kind of higher here are the people who would be considered the very wealthy and the upper class, the people that are well-to-do. And then you have kind of the middle class, and then you have, you know, people that might be, believing, li might be living in poverty or below the poverty level. But this is, these are, represent the various classes of people in all humanity around the world. And then, and we'll just... just We'll just put the word, um, I'll tell you, I want to call this the general population. We'll just call this the general population. Gen pop, right? General population right here. But then there are those folks in the next group that I had represented here, uh, kind of the middle toward the top were systems and the governments, you name it, the, the systems of this world. And so there are different people within this makeup. We would call it institutions. We would call it governments. We would say those that are in charge of the media. We might say there are certain societies or maybe secret societies or political action groups, people that maybe we don't feel like we're quite part of that. Some of these uh, might even be um, uh, the, you know, the, the Hollywood crowd. People who have tremendous influence or the, the structures of society that have tremendous influence in the world maybe even the radio and, and print media, those who have control over communication. That makes us nervous, right? I mean, we, we're learning day in and day out that somebody else, uh, maybe even here, uh, the medical field. That's a system. All of these worldly systems 
that uh, seem to be over us, that we, we feel like the general population, anyway, we feel like we can't do much about this and we try to infiltrate that. Uh, we may have success, we may not. And then there are the few, the elites. Some refer to this as the top 1%. Some refer to this as the cabal. Some say this is that great cult that's out there that predominantly has rejected Christ. Now, again, I mentioned a moment ago that with conspiracies, there are those who are intentional and those who embrace it by default. They just kind of fall in to that. And so you have, and I'm going to put a cross to represent the fact that some of the general population are Christians, Bible-believing Christians that have given their heart and their life to Jesus Christ, and occasionally they will infiltrate some of these systems. Might be very few of them, but they would infiltrate. And according to some conspiracies, no true Christians are a part of this elite. Some say that some possibly are this most powerful, this most wealthy, the multi-billionaires, the heads of the most powerful countries, way less than 1%. And, and so some are what we might call, you know, some might say these are intentional conspirators. Intentional. In other words, Let's say it were all true. We don't know, right? We're not omniscient. Some would say, yeah, I know. I've got it figured out. I'm not omniscient, right? And so that they're involved in this secret cult, this, this uh, witchcraft, Satanism, that they have uh, uh, certain things they embrace concerning Satan's plan. But whether they're intentional or Just by default, they're part of this group. You know, they've come across wealth like the world has never known, multi-multi-billionaires. And because of that wealth, conspiracy or no conspiracy, Bill Gates has great influence because he has all this money. And so when he invests in vaccines, guess what? People get behind that investment, when he says something, people listen. And so whether it's, there's an intentional cult-like activity happening in there or by default, there's a problem, and that is, again, Romans 1.22, thinking they were wise, they became fools because they did what? They worshiped the creation rather than creator. So even if you don't buy into conspiracy theories of them being uh, intentionally up to no good, then you at least might recognize that by default, many of them, the majority of them, have rejected the gospel of Jesus Christ. They don't understand the mystery that has been revealed to us. And so in the name of benevolence, by default, they get involved in what we might call cult-like or satanic activity because they're worshiping the creation rather than the creator, even if their motives are pure and gracious, and they want to save humanity and save the planet, they will neglect what is most important in all of this. And I'm going to tell you that I believe that this crowd, this crowd, and often this crowd, even the church, forgets that this has left something out of the equation. All that discuss conspiracy theories on both sides of the spectrum, rejecting or denouncing them, leave this out of the equation, and that is the God factor. The fact that there is a God, that He is sovereign, that He is sovereign over, and let's say that this is influenced, I'll put 666 here, Let's say that these folks are influenced by the devil himself, that there is an antichrist that's going to use this system because they are intentionally connected with him, or by default they just happen to align with him rather than with the Lord Jesus Christ. But there is a God who is sovereign over all of this crowd. 
they can do nothing without his permission, period. And God is also sovereign over the believers who might know him personally, but he's revealing himself through Christ and his word, the Bible. And so we get called up and not knowing what's happening here when God has said, I am above all of that and I'm revealing myself to you through my son and through my word. And so rather than you trying to figure out everything that's going on here, you can know me personally and walk with the one who is sovereign over that and has it all under his feet. And if we would spend more time getting to know him and trust him rather than trying to figure out them, it would set our mind at ease. It's the one who as a child, remember watching this happen with one of my friends and his son. We were playing football, flag football, intramural football at Emmanuel. Boys were throwing footballs around everywhere. One of my friends, name's uh, Bart, some of you know him, had his son with him at school one day. His son was walking with him, holding his hand, and his son wasn't afraid of all these big guys throwing the balls around and running around, knocking each other down. His son wasn't afraid of any of that because he had his dad by the hand. Listen, all I'm asking you to do is in the midst of all the chaos, rather than trying to get your eye, you are not omniscient. You do not have enough eyes, physical or spiritual, to see everything that is going on. Only God sees that. Rather than trying to figure all that out, take Jesus by the hand and walk with him. Have you done that? Have you done that? You do that. You know and identify Jesus as the Christ. Set you free from all of this. I want to ask you, in your living room, bedroom, wherever you are watching this, if you're in a car, keep your eyes open, please, but wherever, wherever you are, just bow with me in prayer. If you've never trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, forgetting all this, Jesus came to save us from sin, death, hell, and the grave, to give us life everlasting and life more abundantly, regardless of what the world is experiencing. He wants to give us abundant life. Right where you are, say, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I want to be one of the redeemed of humanity. And until you come to save civilization from wreckage when you come again, save me from the wreckage of civilization. Save me from my sin. Forgive me. I believe you died on the cross to pay the price for my sin. I believe you rose again to prove that the sacrifice was accepted, that you are the Son of God with power. And I give my life to you. If you prayed that, today. Would you respond in the comments? Would you email me, Robbie at trinitybc.net? Would you somehow let us know, I've given my heart, given my life to Jesus. Message us right here. Hit that connect card. Let us know that you made a decision to trust Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you're a believer, you've already trusted Him. Turn your focus from all of this to this. And then you'll see what happens. We begin to have influence as God sovereignly places us in some of these systems. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the confidence it gives us. Thank you that you've given us a peace that passes all understanding. When we turn to you, to your word, and we walk with you, let us be a confident people in 2021. Not having to know what tomorrow holds, but knowing who holds tomorrow. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.